Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, team target. Were you yes. waiting long? Uh, not long. Not okay. long. Hello, Brown University and beyond. Welcome to our first ever episode of Sci TV. My name is Ben, and I'll be your host. On this show, we'll get to talk to scientists at Brown, learn about science news from around the world, and even quiz some Brown students on their knowledge of the Science Center, which, by the way, is where we are right now. So we have with us today David Targan, Associate Dean of Science Education, Director of the Lab Observatory, and my best friend. Can you tell us briefly about the history of the Science Center and uh, what it was envisioned to achieve? One place on campus where people from all the different sciences could come together and create new initiatives. What are some of these initiatives? Uh, new programs in science communication, in science outreach, a whole variety of different projects. So. Well, you've done great work. Thank you. It's great up here. Okay. Kind of moving over to your position as the director of the Lab Observatory. Can you tell us a little bit of that? Uh, it's the best example of a 19th century Victorian era working observatory in the country. And now I assume it, it has a telescope, yeah. right? It has multiple telescopes. Uh, and how do those work? Well, the, the big telescope is used for looking at objects that are far away. We also have other telescopes that are used to help us uh, explain to people how time is determined. Astronomy was responsible for time determination. So Mlad told us what time it was, not, not my watch. Not your watch. I don't know how you say your watch. Wow, so we have you to thank for not only the Science Center, but time itself. I don't know if I'm responsible for all time. Can you talk a little bit about um, Lab's role in the community? Ever since it opened in 1991, Lab provided members of the community with a place to come to learn about the latest discoveries. Now this telescope, you know, is so nice. It must be really expensive to use, right? It's free. Um, to free? The, yeah, to the public. Yeah. Okay, um, lastly, before we wrap up this interview, Team Target, I need to know, if you could be any celestial body, what would you be? Yeah, I don't have any real preference. I like them all. You so like them all? I, I'm an equal, you know, my lover of all celestial bodies. Equal lover of all celestial bodies. Yes. Dean David Target. Let's give it up for him, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Dean okay. Target. You bet. It's here that we highlight some of the most important recent scientific happenings from Brown and around the world. The Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded a few weeks ago for discoveries of mechanisms for autophagy. Autophagy is essentially the ways that cells recycle their own contents. This means breaking down unnecessary proteins to be used for other purposes, such as energy consumption or fighting off viruses. It'd be like if someone was robbing you and you took all the empty milk cartons in your house and turned them into a baseball bat to fight off the robber. This was first discovered in yeast cells before it was realized that this process also existed in humans. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to a team of three who did research on nanomachines, which are basically the electric motors of the nano world. The nano world, of course, meaning anything that is on the scale of a billionth of a meter. Nanomachines consist of moving molecular parts, which are quickly growing in complexity. For example, in 2011, these scientists built a four-wheel drive molecular car, although the scientists have not yet determined whether this car was a Cadillac or a Subaru. As the nanomachines get more sophisticated, they can be used to carry out important tasks like be injected into your bloodstream and search for cancer cells or deliver medicine. Finally, the Nobel Prize in Physics was also awarded to a team of three, one of whom is Michael Kosterwitz from Brown University. Yeah, this school, this calls for celebration. From my understanding, these scientists used a field of mathematics called topology to look at the weird properties of weird matter. So like matter that is so cold or so thin that traditional rules of physics no longer apply and quantum effects take over. This includes matter that is two-dimensional or even one-dimensional. As far as other cool happenings at Brown, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that a few weeks ago was the 125th birthday of the Loud Observatory, Brown's very own night sky observation center. This calls for more celebration. To celebrate, LAD hosted a week of events, with talks from astrophysics professors, panels of scientists discussing their love of outer space, free food, and even a few extra nights of open observation, where anyone could come to the LAD observatory for free to look up at the night sky through the observatory's telescope. Oh, hi. 
Our next segment is called Science on the Streets. And it involves one of my favorite activities, talking to strangers. For our first time doing it, I thought it'd be fun if we see how much people on the sideline know about our Science Center mascot, Fitz. Fitz is an axle model. That's not how you say it. Sorry, what? That's not how you say it. Axolotl? It's pronounced axolotl. It's uh, Nahuatl, that's the Aztec language for water monster. Oh. I'm Aztec, so I know this thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just, just letting you know. Well, there you go, Ajolotl. Let's see how much uh, people in the side I know about our absolutely adorable water monster. Hi, do you know what an axolotl is? Somewhat. Do you know that it's actually pronounced Ajolotl? No, I did not. It swims in water. What do you think of it? Think it's think it's cute? No, I think it's creepy. Wow. Rude. Hey, you. You. Hi. Do you, Hi. I got to ask you something. <laughs> okay. Do you know what an axolotl is? I know it's a Nahuatl word. It's like one of those weird little like frog looking thing amphibians, you know, but they have like the crazy little hairs and stuff. They're so cute. <laughs> Cuter than me? Yes. <laughs> Hi. It is a lungless salamander native to Mexico that is pedomorphic, which means that it retains the juvenile form. Do, do you know what an axolotl is? Yeah, I do. What is it? It has little things growing out of its face like this. What you doing? Um, getting water. Oh yeah? Do, do, do you know about things that live in the water? Why do you need so much water? Hey, what are you listening to? Um, nothing right now, actually. Weird. I mean, you, you seem like a knowledgeable guy, so... Not as knowledgeable as I seem. My feelings towards it are complex. Oh, 11th floor, great. Animal on the third floor. The yeah, it is! Type of thing. Cute lizard type yeah, thing, right? Yeah. It's cute. It's adorable. You should make your way up to the third floor and take a look at it. Okay, well, bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for you today, folks. Thanks so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time.